Hey guys, welcome back. So today we have a quant webinar schedule. We're going to discuss time, speed, distance. Now all the questions are going to be like slightly complicated, maybe a little tricky. They're going to be based on the basic formula, which is distance is equal to speed into time. So we'll discuss that eventually. Uh, but first of all, we'll start with one critical reasoning question. We'll revise what we did last time. So I'll give you a critical reasoning question, which uh, will be based on weighted averages. As in, it'll help us in case, you know, we use weighted averages in that. It'll help us understand that better. All right. Now, um, a quick word for the ones who are joining us for the first time today. The way the webinar is run is basically I give you a question and then I wait for two, three minutes for you to um, you know solve it. You can give your answer in the Q&A. It has been activated. And then I'll discuss how we could solve the question. And um, then I'll give you some time in case you have any queries or whatever, you can ask me at that time regarding that particular question. And uh, then I'll give you the next question and so on and so forth. Right. So let's start then. Okay, let's look at it now. So Adele starts from city A towards city T. So again, I can't say it enough diagram. I just have to make a diagram. So she starts from A to T after one hour, 20 minutes. So, you know, she's reached somewhere. I don't know where. I'll say one hour, 20 minutes later. Then Tom starts from here. Tom starts with a speed thrice that of Adele from city T towards city A. So Tom starts from here. Here, if Adele's speed was S, Tom's speed is 3S. And the moment I see this, it makes me really happy because I know I'll be able to use my ratios, right? I have the ratio of their speeds, which is given to me as 1 is to 3. I mean, I'm sure it'll come in handy. It doesn't matter. Okay. Now. By the time Adele covered one sixth of the distance, so whatever she, you know, covered one sixth of the distance, let's say this is one by sixth of the total distance. Tom had covered the same two. So Tom had started from here and Tom also covered one sixth of the total distance. So, you know, it doesn't look like, yeah, whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, we just assume that they both have covered one sixth. So this is also one sixth of T. Okay. So now, when Adele has reached here, Tom has reached here, right? They have both covered the same distance. My distance is the same now. So then certainly my ratios are going to come in handy, right? So the ratio of their speeds at this time was 1 is to 3, which means that the ratio of the time taken will be 3 is to 1. Now, what am I given? I am given that Tom started one hour, 20 minutes after Adele, right? Which means that this difference of two on the ratio scale, it is actually equal to one hour, 20 minutes, which is 80 minutes, which means my multiplier is 40. And into 40 and into 40, which means that I, that, here, the ratio of this is Adele is to Tom, right? Speed of Adele is to speed of Tom. So time taken by Adele and time taken by Tom. So 120 minutes is the time taken by Adele. And 40 minutes is the time taken by, right? So basically Adele takes two hours and Tom takes 40 minutes. For how much? For one sixth of the distance. Make sense? Okay, now what is the sum of the time taken by Adele to cover distance 80 and time taken by Tom to cover distance 80? Now we're talking TA, we're talking about the entire distance, right? Uh, till now, we only talked about one sixth of the distance. So time taken by Adele to cover one sixth of the distance was what? Two hours. So then time taken by Adele to cover the entire distance will be simply 12 hours. And time taken by Tom to cover one sixth of the distance was 40 minutes. So the time taken by Tom to cover the entire distance will just be 40 minutes, which I can say is two by three hours into six, which gives me four hours. So then the sum of the times taken by, that is what we sum of the time taken by Adele to cover distance 80, which is 12 hours and time taken by Tom is four hours. Total sum is 16 hours. So our answer over here is 
ya. Yeah, so you know what, uh, you can solve most of the questions using algebra, yeah? but then that's not something that we are going to focus on. And why is that? Because algebra makes you make so many equations, right? You end up taking so many variables, whereas in GMAT, the kind of questions you get, you can do with pretty much no variables at all. At max, you know, I, you know, I would maybe take one variable if required, but otherwise, usually I'll not need to take any variables. Your ratios, your variation, your percentages, these topics you need to be really, really thorough with, and then you won't really need to use algebra, especially for all these questions. Then, you know, you, you take D, you take S, you take 3S, then you make two equations, and then you solve them simultaneously. It will just take so much of your time, right? Um, Besides, look now, you know, and, and a lot of people have been talking about this uh, GMAT versus GMAT. Okay, we will just talk about this as well. I'll talk about GMAT versus GMAT program and why it takes it makes a whole lot more sense. There is one more question that I want us to do right now. Let's quickly take a look at it and uh, then we'll, uh, you know, talk about that as well. Okay, let's take a look at it. Harry leaves home for a walk. So he's here at home and he leaves home for a walk and has a constant rate of 15 minutes per mile. Now speed is given to us in terms of time per distance, which means he takes 15 minutes for one mile, right? Now, if I want to convert it into a usual speed of miles per minute, for example, miles per hour, let's say if I want to convert it to uh, PM, uh, M, uh, MPH, what will I do? I know that one mile is covered in what? In 15 minutes, right? So then four miles will be covered in what? In 60 minutes, which is nothing but one hour. So the speed becomes four MPH. Cool. Okay, but in any case, we don't need to do all this calculation. This is just something that because, you know, the speed is given in a different format. So how could we convert it into a regular format? We may not even need to. So we'll not do this calculation when we read the first line. Just that in case we do need to in some question, this is how we can do it. Okay. Now, after he covers 1.2 miles, so after he covers 1.2 miles, he receives a call from his daughter that she's on her way and will reach home in 57 minutes. Assuming he must return using the same route which he walks, how many more miles away from home can Harry walk if he must reach home at the time at the same time as his daughter? So at the same time as his daughter. All right. So then he can walk further ahead, but he must return using the same route and must come here. From here to here, this entire journey of his should take, what, 57 minutes. So how much distance will he cover in 57 minutes? We know that he covers one mile in 15 minutes. So if I divide this by 15 minutes, will I get the number of miles that he'll cover in 57 minutes? Certainly. So let me do that. So I say 15 threes are 45, so 3 point, and then 12, 120, so 3.8. This means that from here, here, yeah, to here, to back here, the total distance is 3.8 miles. Now, from here to here, the distance is 1.2 miles. So, if I add plus 1.2, what do I get? I get total of 5 miles that he covered total from home to back home, to, uh, 5 miles, which means that from home, to this point, the last point to which he walked, he covered how much? 2.5 miles, of course, half of it, right? So then if he's already walked for 1.2 miles, he can go further ahead, how much? How many miles? 1.3 miles, because they'll add up to 2.5 miles. So our answer over here is going to be 1.3. Simple enough? Okay, now, first of all, let me uh, talk about that concept that we were discussing about whether algebra can be used for these questions. Yeah, and then we'll take any other generic questions that you might have or related to this question also, no worries. So then, look, um, future is GMAT focus, right? And people have been asking about, they have been talking about whether they should stick to GMAT, whether they should go on to GMAT focus, etc. Right? Um, of course, you know, and there is a whole post that I have 
already thought about I've written and you know I'll put it up probably today or tomorrow which gives all my opinion on this topic and we'll talk and you know I've I've given all the points I've discussed who can switch who should not switch and whatever so all and the difference between the two tests and what is better and uh, you know whether if you have strength in one topic then which is better etc but the the reality is that the fo- the future is the GMAT focus now, GMAT focus is going to rely a whole lot more on your understanding of ratios, variation, percentages, basically on these topics of arithmetic, because now you have a whole other section also, which depends on these topics, and that is your data insights. Yeah, your All your integrated reasoning kind of questions, they make a whole lot of sense. They become a lot more easier. You'll be able to save a lot of time in case you understand the these relations really well yeah what are the various ratios then percentages how do they change etc the relation between variables if one changes what happens to the other you will end up saving a lot of time uh, especially in certain kind of questions yeah now in case you understand these relations really well so then it stands to reason that it is time for us to ensure that we understand ratios, variation, et cetera, really well. They help us save time now, not only in quant, not only in TSD, in work rate. They will also help us save a lot of time in uh, integrated reasoning kind of questions, which are going to be a totally different section, right? So now there are going to be out of three, two sections dependent on our skills in these topics. And that is why it makes a whole lot more sense to ensure that we understand this very well. Look, I... You know, if you have two, three months, then it certainly makes sense to try and look at the ratio method to solve the TSD question and work rate questions as well. I mean, it's okay in case, you know, you're taking the test in the next 15, 20 days. I totally understand. No, uh, you know, of course, do not change your method. You, you know, then all your entire strategy goes for a toss. So, of course, then it's not a good idea. But in case you have time, then it certainly makes sense. Look, during the exam, you use the method that comes to your mind. It doesn't matter if by the time you come to the exam, you have developed uh, a, you know, a lot of comfort with ratios, etc. Then it will automatically come to your mind. The moment I see things like S and 3S or uh, S and you know, 50% of S or I suddenly become really happy. Why? Because I know now I have to do absolutely nothing. I know my work has reduced a whole lot. I'll just use ratios. I'll just flip it. I'll just get my answer and that way. So uh, if you have put in enough time, by the time you take the test, automatically the ratios method will come to your mind if you have developed a comfort with it. If you haven't, if algebra comes to your mind first, please use algebra. Absolutely, right? You are not going to waste time thinking about, oh, I need to solve it using ratios. Absolutely not, because you don't have that extra time, right? Then you use algebra, whatever comes to your mind, quickly make equations, solve simultaneously, get your answer. It doesn't matter. But while you are practicing, I will strongly advise you to find you want to use algebra, solve the question, please go ahead. But before you do that, first try the ratios method, see if it makes sense, see if you're getting your answer. Um, if you know, once you get your answer using ratios or you don't get it, doesn't matter, then you can try your algebra method also. That what in case you know I'm unable to do it during the test, and how will I solve it using algebra? Try that as well, right? So, um, most of the que- of course, all the questions can be solved using algebra as well. But um, it, it'll just, it's, it's, I hate to write down things and solve, you know, normally I like to do it orally and ratios helps us do that. With time, everything that I have written over here, you will not write most of it. You will just make the diagram and get your answer once you practice enough, of course. It, it's not magic, of course, you'll have to practice for it. But yeah, once you do, then it'll happen, right? So I hope that answers your question. Yeah, so um, yeah, multiple uh, people have asked me about the difficulty level of the questions over here. So I would say actually most of them were, you know, about 700, maybe some 650 as well. But um, I picked up questions which were tricky. People found them difficult, yeah, where people do struggle with, let's say, how to start, how to think about it. And how do we start? We start with the diagram. 
That's always what I do, right? In races, in TSD, we'll always make a diagram and then move ahead. Most of the questions would be considered 700 level. They, even though they're not difficult, they're not, not too many calculations, whatever. But then, and the concept, as I showed you, we, there is only one uh, formula that we used. Distance is equal to speed into time, right? But then still, how to think about it and how to start it and all, people do find that a little difficult. Yeah, so we'll have a relative speed con uh, webinar as well soon enough. Um, let's see, hopefully within a month, yeah, we'll have a relative speed con uh, webinar as well, certainly. There are quite a few topics. Um, I would I would like to have a separate webinar for relative speed, a separate webinar for effective speed, then a separate webinar for circular motion. Yeah, we're going to have all of those. Yeah, so I am going to put up that blog post of uh, GMAT versus GMAT Focus. I most likely tomorrow. Uh, it will be on uh, on the website on the blog uh, under test strategy. So do check it out. Yeah, yeah, most likely by tomorrow. Okay, I think we're done for today. So I'll see you guys next time. Um, I'll schedule a class and let you guys know in advance. Yeah. All right. Bye. Good night and a good morning to people on the other side. Bye.